Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, hero of the Reich, defender of the Fatherland, master of propaganda, and here to bring you another two versus two, in fact, on Wolfhead. So yes, indeed, we are continuing the Market Garden days, although we won't be finding the British, no, instead we'll be finding the, the Americans airborne forces. Of course, they won't really be looking like it, because Relic hasn't really supplied additional skin, sadly, although in... One of the Tales of Valor campaigns. There are airborne engineers, actually. That would actually be a fun uh, unit to bring in, but there we go. Let's not go too far off into that. But here we are, Americans, and we are seeing Minutemen 1, 2, 3, and... What? Oh, bloody hell. Why can't they have any simple names? You know, like, well, who do we have here? Krieg das Vaterland. Yes, indeed, that's certainly much more simple and well, inspiring. And Yeasel. Perhaps a yeasty weasel. Who knows? And of course, let's not forget the map Wolfhead, so of course, based on the sort of training grounds and area outside of Arnhem. Was only one of the first areas where contact was made, but not where American Airborne. Apparently, these chaps have drifted off a bit. No, they were the British, and of course, they sort of ran into some groups that were, in fact, out training here. Although I can't remember the Kampfgruppe in this case, though, we'll imagine these are German forces of the Kampfgruppe von Tetau, which was one of the larger Kampfgruppe. Kampfgruppen, in fact, composed partly of SS NCOs from a training school, partly of Hermann Göring Fallschirm replacement battalion troops. Rather complex, long name, I won't go fully into it, and I'll probably come with a bastardization of it. And also of sec security units or Sicherungseinheiten, basically just also troops which weren't really expected for frontline duties, but unless of course we also have the sort of map rather open throughout the center. This area in fact tends to be the major hotspot du jour. Victory points are far away, sort of in a V shape, or turned up each V shape sort of depending on how you look at it. Spread out there far from bases. Fuel points are in the middle of everything. They are sort of in a triangle right here in the center. Some others are closer to the bases, but all of them noteworthily are low fuel points. There are no high points, in fact, or meat, possibly some meat. No, munitions are high, but that's about the only ones. That and the one right here, which is a low one. So there you go. Rather interesting topography of the map. And of course, we do have these two train stations, which do create some rather interesting blocking zones for any sort of fire, and it usually figures into some sort of strategy or tactic, in fact. So let us get right to it. The Kampfgruppe von Tetau versus. The 82nd Airborne Infantry Division will say. Barracks going down from both of them, so they're probably using some infantry, probably an infantry heavy start. This is good, this is interesting. Versus, of course, dual Wehrmacht quarters. There's nothing yeah, else yeah, they really yeah. can't get. And tomorrow shall be, I do believe, episode 200. Which, of course, shall also be interesting, and I hope we can get one hell of a game since it will also be the last. Day of the Market Garden Day, since that is the day Market Garden was officially turned off after things had gone well pear shaped to be mild in manner. Barracks are ready, engineers are heading out to all sides. Interesting, interesting. Pioneers are also heading out from their points as well. And what shall be going on? We are seeing an MG42 from the Wehrmacht quarters of Krieg das Vaterland, which I would say roughly means War of the Fatherland or something like that. Not the most proper name, but there you go. Engineers getting engaged by numerous pioneers, and the engineers are taking quite a beating running away. And looks like he's minute man is getting a lot more m engineers. In fact, he's getting four engineer teams by now. That's rather unusual, in particular in a two versus two, going heavily for seizing territory. It seems he has a barracks, but he's not using it. But on the other hand, our friend Vajik. Yo, bother! VA is in fact using it, the other airborne chap. We'll just can't call him Captain W under the command of Major Minute Man. Sounds about right. Pioneers standing about here out in the open as riflemen are engaging. More engineers heading out to all sides. And these pioneers might not survive, but they do manage to secure this point for the fatherland. We are losing but then they lose it again. MG42 and Nope, engineers and pioneers here, MG42 sitting up there, bike moving about from Yeezel. And he has an MG42 himself, a rather defensive static strategy so far. Engineers and riflemen getting suppressed. 
But Pani is losing to the Engineers and looks like some Engineers are moving in on the MG42 which flank is rather open to an Engineer sort in fact Breeze guns firing away and this is going to force that MG42 to get the devil out of there in the meanwhile Yisl forces are pressing forward in the east Looks like the Pioneers are forced out of the train station. The Engineers proving too much of a threat to the poor Pioneers. And looks like the Americans are so far gaining the advantage. Volkskrein is now out from Krieg das Vaterland. And the MG42 just makes it back in time. Engineers once more advancing. Taking up heavy cover. Volkskrein are out in the open though. Engineers moving in. One Engineer goes down. A Pioneer goes down as well. Five Engineers versus six German troops. More Pioneers advancing. Looks like the Engineers will not be winning this one. And looks like a medic station is going down in the center, not a bad choice. Rather quickly as well, rather focusing on the large amounts of infantry of course, and of course being able to recover them. Engineers that will need to retreat, oh the engineer team is lost. One team of engineers down and more riflemen now advancing on the Volksgrenadiers who are not in greater numbers. More Volksgrenadiers though from Yol Yisl are nearby, but will they move into support? And will the bike and MD42? Yes you need no the Volksgrenadiers from Yisl are pulling back, leaving behind any Krieg das Vaterland. Medic moving in. Rivalman moving in from the west, opening up on the Volksgrenadiers. That's quite a lot of infantry action so far. Rivalman getting suppressed by the Rivalman in the west, are putting all the pressure on the Volksgrenadiers. MG42 moving behind. My goodness, what's it doing? Apparently setting up there, but no. It's getting hit up, and what's it doing? It's running all the way around the house. That seems a bit awkward and a long rap to go. And then one MG42 gunner goes down and looks like they will have to retreat again. But looks like these riflemen are taking heavy losses and are retreating. Another goes down in behind only two. False grenades are opening up. American medics pulling back the American wounded, leaving the German wounded behind. More false grenades in the west. Yeast pulling strongly in the east. Pioneers laying down a bunker. Bike opening up on the engineers right there. And Krieg das Vaterland's false grenades are pushing almost. Probably Sigurd's Truppen actually. Security troops of. Well, not the highest quality, generally, but doing their best. Riflemen charging in on these f few Volksgrenadiers, and they are forced to run away. The MG42 opens up on them. Volksgrenadiers could also join in. Medis continue to move forwards unopposed. Quite fortunate there. And looks like some more riflemen are forced to retreat in the face of the German threat. And looks like they are managing to secure something here. And the East Bunker up, and we're probably going to see a Medic Bunker right there. In fact, looks like Captain VA. Is doing his best in the east. One major minute man is doing not so well so far, lagging a bit more in infantry. But we are seeing a supply yard up already from him. Nothing otherwise, though, from Mr. Hey, but looks like they're making another push here in the west, hoping to press onwards for Uncle Sam and hopefully regain to where they're actually supposed to be, which is somewhere near Song, which is rather far away from Arnhem and Wolfhetze. MG42 advancing, once more trying to set up there, but once more. Why on earth are they taking the long route? That's actually, I think that's a bit of a bug for some reason, because they can exit that door all right. In behind only false gunners, and now the house is once more surrounded. Riflemen on all sides, and more particularly not on the sides where the MG42 can right away turn away. And they're opening up on the engineers, the wrong chaps. More false gunners are arriving, they're opening up, MG MG42 retreating. Riflemen out in the open against so many false gunners. Medics continuing their run. In the east, false gunners with an a bike is advancing. Bike hits a mine, though. Good show from the Americans. But these riflemen are outgunned by all of these false grenadiers. And another bunker going down from Krieg das Vaterland. Probably will be another medic bunker. So it looks like the German forces are so far securing their front lines. But looks like the Americans are pushing onwards in the west. And looks like a motor pool is going up for a minute, men. And there's another supply yard is also up for VA. WA. It looks like the false grenadiers are doing their best. Engineers still holding out. And American medics still pulling back with the wounded. Although German medics will soon be able to do the same. Volkskrenn is pushing onwards in the east. Good show. Very good aggression from the Germans. And let us go look at Yisel of Kamkovetetau. So far still relying mostly on security troops. Again mostly meant for checkpoints. Guarding important bits. Hunting down partisans. Not really fighting American infantry on the front lines. But there you go. They were rather forced into that situation. In fact, a lot of troops which weren't really meant for fighting on the front lines were forced into that particular task. And a rifleman team has already be re been reconstituted. Good show by VA. Looks like the motor pool might soon be up. In fact, we're seeing two motor pools up. My goodness. And false is doing the best against all of these rifleman engineers. More, in fact, pushing in. It looks like men and men and VA are pushing now heavily towards the east. False is doing the best. 
Looks like around the large line. MG42 securing the base of the advance, which is good. But looks like these false grenades might not make it out there. Looks like a huge retreat, my goodness. One team is awfully close to death. The other one, not so much. MG42 firing at one throng, but now another prong of American forces are moving in from the north. Will the MG42 be able to... No, another MG42 covering the retreat. Excellent job there, Giesel. And there we go, rifle and engineers getting suppressed rather heavily. And heavy losses, force them to retreat. Oh yes, I'm not entirely sure where they're... If they're actually going to using any armored cars, I suppose they could have been airdropped, although that might have been a bit heavy, t difficult to do with gliders, but nonetheless... Let's just use our imagination again. Not fully realistic, I know. But I do know that the armored cars will be to a minimum. I'll divulge that much. False kind is marching about, but it's still going to be a rather interesting game. One in particular, and looks like a lot of barbed wire now going down. The security troops quickly laying down some security wire or whatever. Also known as concertina wire because it was well rather funny like that. Americans are advancing right past all of the barbed wire. Barbed wire so far not really doing much except denying them some cover and direct approach right through here. Flame flows opening up on the German medics, my goodness, but Krieg, the first line advancing in with his false grenades, mines laying down. He had to be a bit careful that not to stay too close. German mortar on the spot as well. False grenades getting scorched by the flame flows. Americans are once more pushing out heavily in the west, while they are apparently ignoring the east with lots of mines. Good job there, usual. Very good job. Lots of mines. And of course, also a nice job with the barbed wire, although a bit there could also have done well. And Americans are pushing away the false grenades, leaving behind only a medic, MG42 in a medic bunker, Americans hit a mine, mortar also firing away, engineers with the flame for a retreating, but the Americans push onwards nonetheless, false grenades, pack 38 opening up, Krieg das Vaterland already has a Krieg barracks, Krieg for Krieg das Vaterland, yes yes, and oh dear, looks like the medic bunker is getting completely surrounded, getting scorched, oh dear, the MG42 gunners need to get out there and the mortar team is retreating from Krieg das Vaterland. Volkskrainer is holding up the line as best as they can, but really a lot of firepower being directed against this area. And looks like a grenadier team proper f as ersatz Panzergrenadieren from the Hermann Göring unit are ready. Or they could have at least gotten a promotion after having fought a bit and getting wounded, earning, proving that they are actually competent soldiers and not getting killed right away. I suppose. Watch how we're going. Yeasel has a storm armory up, but looks like, my goodness, this is a huge assault from the Americans. This is really good teamwork. In fact, they're really just focusing, attacking from all angles and just putting up the pressure. Although they might want to work on their cover, but still, good job there. And this medic bunker might soon be a burned history. Note, it looks like an armored car has broken through. T-17 opening up on the medic bunker. And another one in the northern part as well, forcing Yeasel to abandon his eastern plans, although then again it might be hitting some mines soon, in which case it won't be doing so well. And Americans are really putting up the pressure here, keeping the German forces contained to their base, security troops or Volkskrieg, whatever you'd like to call them, pressing onwards, but they simply cannot keep it up. The cover is just not good enough against the American heavy cover. And medics pulling in what they can, T-17 firing away here, pushing through in the north as well. And looks like this one might hit a mine. Yes, indeed, destroyed engine while engineers are pushing through in the west. And what is this? Turning the barbed wire against the Germans and laying down machine gun emplacements, protecting for when they actually need to retreat from this area. Grenadiers throwing a grenade, not doing much, but still something. But this is a rather novel approach, pushing onwards and, of course, being aware that they have to retreat. What do they do instead? Machine gun emplacements, that's... I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go, but I'm not going to call it a bad idea right away. It's certainly interesting. They've certainly taken the advantage, and now they're really ensconcing themselves, making it much harder for the Wehrmacht to approach from one angle. And it looks like Yisl has gone defensive for the Fatherland rungs over the security troops as they press almost like while well, the less fortunate ones don't really get that advantage. But firing away, forcing the American troops away, but nonetheless, the, they will run into a rather nasty bit there and the machine gun emplacements. American anti tank guns also moving in. Full gun is coming under fire. 30 caliber browning machine gun opening up, pinning down or suppressing them at least. And T-17 just continuing to fire away at this bunker, not achieving much. And this T-17 very, very slowly trying to pull away. Incredibly slowly. And this T-17 might get pants without it very soon. Or not. But a Puma is on the way and it's actually going to become a Puma. My goodness, how rare. An actual Puma. 
Upgraded with the 50mm gun and the turret which was from the Leopard tank. The gun is pretty much the same as the Panzer III, I believe. Not up that one. T-17 firing away. Anti-tank gun ready. And looks like something is ready. Another heavy armored car. Schwerer Panzer Spielwagen. Sunderkraft Fahrzeug 2430. And Ralfman getting gunned down. Puma advancing. Ralfman retreating. American front line still holding out. And now more barbed wire being laid down by the Cowards. Americans. Now, my goodness, this is really going to turn into quite a front line. Lots of barbed wire. T-17 and anti-tank are now opening up on this medic bunker. Looks like the Germans might soon be losing their medic bunkers in general. Krieg, Kampfkraft sent up for Krieg das Vaterland. And it's time to go for the Americans. My apologies. Over to Major Minute Man. Who is now getting more armored cars in Master Garden. Quite a few down somehow. And looks like this T-17 is awfully damaged. The Pumas doing their best. Or could it be the Pac-38? Which certainly would have fitted in with the security company. Since of course by that time they weren't really that effective. In reality and of course were probably designated for rear guard and second grade units. And by grade of course I mean grading of quality. So sec oh that will be more freight. Great but there we go sometimes we make mistakes. And looks like Krieg das Vaterland has already gone heavily for the veterans. See not entirely sure that's a good investment this quickly. But at least he's getting the best, most out of his troops, which is certainly not entirely bad. But at the same time, I can't help but wonder if he shouldn't have gone something, I don't know, a bit more stalwart, perhaps a bit more armored. T-17's advancing anti-tank gun is ready. Nebelwerfer's howling, my goodness. Adding in the artillery. Anti-tank gun cleared out. Puma opening up on the T-17s. Now it gets stunned. And looks like Krieg das Vaterland is pushing through. And these ways, Yisla is being laying down tank traps. Really heavily on fortification works, but at the same time they don't get complacent. They still keep on moving, attacking. This is brilliant. This is a good combination. Active defensive and offensive. Preparing defensive when things go wrong, but they aren't relying on them solely. They still have infantry. My goodness, this is a good two visits to a really good one so far. Although could certainly do a bit, a bit more, but then again it wouldn't have been in on Market Garden, I suppose. Puma advancing, opening up on the T-17. False Guns and Grenadiers doing their best, but now they might be left behind. Alone T-17 opening up on them. More 50cm guns getting ready. Getting dropped from the air now as well it seems. Pack advancing. Medic bunker just barely there. And some MG42 covering this area. And Medic engineers are securing this point as well. Not looking good for our friends in Kampfgruppe von Tetau. And meanwhile the heavy armored cars have secured the east with the support from the Erstarts, Panzergrenadier and Sigurung Swoppen or Grenadiers and Volksgrenadiers again. I know I'm playing around and uh, if it gets confusing I apologize but again I do like to play around with history a bit makes it a bit more exciting palpable all that and Grenadiers are securing the central area now engineers are ready false Grenadiers and Grenadiers are advancing through here veterans with three of course veterans one for German infantry actually heals them a bit and they also get a bit of damage resistance as they get veterans with two some of the lead armor some of them general damage resistance bonus and veterans the three gives them a health bonus but now oh my goodness that's a lot of firepower being directed against them they need to retreat run away back to German lines never worth going down but oh dear it doesn't look to be hitting and again it looks like a rather good effort from the Americans rather pushing on where they can and my Stu 42 from Krieg das Vaterland apparently having gotten it from somewhere probably some SS Kampfgruppe and a Geschützwagen well apparently the 21st Panzer Division did manage to get out of Normandy somewhat and left behind what some of its Geschützwagens for the other Kampfgruppen in Arnhem to actually use. Or we'll just imagine that. Otherwise, I can't really explain that. But never worth a ready. Force Grenadiers getting, grenadiers getting reinforced, and it looks like a large advance is going on here. Stu 42. Oh dear, Stu 42 was lost in seconds to heavy anti tank on fire. My goodness. A tiny battery, and it looks like, oh dear, the Geschützwagen won't survive either and doesn't even have veterancy. At least it could have gotten veterancy too, in which case it would have gotten a decent MG42 on top. Grenadiers and false Grenadiers doing their best to turn the tide, but even for the Fatherland, the amount of firepower being directed at them by the Americans. No! They're retreating, but a second wave of riflemen moves in, and the anti-tank guns just keep firing. 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 Not entirely sure what to say, and I do believe it's time for the mid-game analysis. So far, it's rather 
Hectic game, rather changing about. First it looked alright for the Germans, but now it looks like the Americans might have the advantage. And now they're laying down tank traps. My goodness, this is some really advanced thinking right here. But currently it's not looking too good for the forces of Kampfgruppe von Teta. They have been forced back a bit, trying their best for bunkers and infantry. And they so far have been rather cut off from this area, but then again, currently it's rather open. A single Stu 42 could in fact break through right here, get about and knock out those tanks. Well, those machine gun emplacements then break through properly, but then again, they might also want to deal with this threat because the Americans are really pushing hard, and they of course have those medic stations pulling in the wounded, T-17s getting ready for a cavalry charge, and lots of infantry with BARs and whatnot else. Rather exciting, rather interesting, and of course lots of anti-tank guns, which rather minimizes the effect of comfortable with Antetos armored and vehicular support. But the Americans, if they can really push through here and break the German opposition here, they might actually win this game because then the Germans won't have really have much to maneuver in. Then again, if Kampfgruppe von Tetto's forces might be able to break through here in the West, they can really collapse the American plan because they don't really have anything to break in case this breaks through or breaks down. Of course, they might also be able to break through here, but either way, if they can secure a breakthrough here in the West or the East, they might be able to turn the tide. Although the Americans do retreat in good order without suffering too heavily and keep that medic station going, perhaps get another one. They might also be able to keep on going for some time. Do they have supply at upgrades? No, they really, really strongly should consider getting those to help with the manpower upkeep. But let us return to the fight and let us go a look at the A. T-17s advancing here in the west, opening up on the ME-42 on the train cart. More T-17s advancing, in fact. Nebelwerf is opening up. Puma's holding back. MG42 might be cleared out. And looks like the anti-tank on positions are getting hit by the Nebelwerfers. Oh dear, several direct hits. Oh dear, that's a several anti-tank guns cleared out right there. Quite unfortunate for the Americans. It looks like the armored cars are pushing through in the west. Opposing the T-17s. Grenadiers advancing. And looks like another push from Krieg. That's far is going on now, equipping all of his... Security troops of Volksgrenadiers with MP40 C17 opening up on the Volksgrenadiers riflemen with BARs advancing. Strafing run is ready. This could prove very nasty right here in all of these concentrated German troops. Very nasty, in fact. No suppressor volleys though from the riflemen. T17 pulling back. Volksgrenadiers are continuing advancing, but right into automatic fire. This could end up badly. Then again, if just the Americans will push some suppressor fire down. They could do it. No, the false guns are running away. Too much firepower. Leaving behind only some other token forces from Yeezel to hold the line. In fact, false gunner team cut down. And they both have actually gone for airborne doctrines. Of course, they rather fit in as airborne forces. False gunners in the center taking quite a bit of fire. And in the east as well. This could end up badly. And what is this? Strafing run. Penning down. Grenadiers, false grenadiers, and an MG42. But a medic pack goes up. And that MD-42 doesn't really care about its pinned or not, it fires for the fatherland. That's its only concern in life. And looks like now it might not be a concern anymore as it's getting killed. In the meanwhile, Diesel putting down the dreaded flak 88. But it's getting under fire from the anti-tank gun for the fatherland goes up. German forces heroically holding the line despite best attempts by Americans with explosives. And oh dear, the anti-tank gun got blown up. And now the Geschützwagen once more is under fire. Getting hit in the flank by the anti-tank gun. Not good, not good. Pioneers moving into repair. Looks like a repair bunker is up. Good show there. But I doubt they will be able to repair this Geschützwagen. Still no veterans to force armor. Main gun destroyed on the Geschützwagen. Not a happy little Geschützwagen, in fact. The Schutzwagen is lost. The Americans still holding the center. Riflemen team reform, but the central victory point is no longer theirs. In fact, they could actually break through here and do quite a bit of damage, but they seem to be neglecting that a bit, unfortunately. Sometimes you really sh need to be aware of trying to find other opportunities rather than the direct one. And trying to uh, exploit those, and that rather seems to be where the American commanders are faltering a bit. Now, Nebelwerf is hitting this concentrated position. Riflemen getting pinned down, burned up, anti-tank guns getting the same treatment. I'm not talking about a spa treatment. And forces approaching in the east once more, in the west as well. Not quite as much luck there. Sniper's now ready from VA. T-17 
G17's marching in, opening up on the German infantry, which is looking rather undefended. Only a Puma and a pack could deal with this if they were to move, but they aren't. But there's another pack actually ready to support anti armored cars pulling back. Engineers trying to repair them. Riotman trying to take a point while under fire. This is not good at all. T17 lost. Engineers trying to burn the German troops. And there's actually nothing to really protect any of this. No airdrop mortars or heavy machine gun to assist. That could actually be a good choice right here against all of these clumped up German troops. It does not seem to be within their notice. And the Puma advances, or the heavy armored car does, right into the line of fire of the anti-tank gun. Anti-tank gun is lost. And let us go look to back at Krieg das Vaterland, who has gone, of course, gone for Blitzkrieg. And looks like a bit is going on here in the east, in the west, not much else. A storm armory now going up in the comfortable Fantasio, calling upon its more heavily armored assets, it seemed, or at least some more artillery. Right from the advancing engineers, advancing, getting gunned down, grenadiers, false grenadiers, and now stormtroopers from the SS NCO Schule. Arnhem moving in, apparently. With Panzer Strix and they re accrue the MG42, but they do take hits from their own never worth, that's a bit unfortunate. But the German forces do advance continually, stubbornly, heroically, not sure. It looks like the Americans are now preparing for push in the west, rather interestingly. While the others are keeping the Americans and the German forces occupied in the east. Storm Armory still going up, false grenadiers and grenadiers getting reinforced while the stormtroopers are running back. Home. Grenadiers and Fulks are approaching in the east and airborne now dropping in actually proper looking airborne. Joining in the riflemen and all of these German troops. Oh dear, Grenadier team cut down. These Fulks will not have a heavy fate either. Taking extraordinary losses although now the Americans are moving and of course they are less accurate when moving. Oh dear, that was terrible losses. Terrible losses for Yeezel. Not really what he wants to suffer. Medic bunker getting repaired though, good. And what's this, an officer? An officer? I don't know if he get that. And it looks like this is a raid on the Nebelwerfers. Officer moves in. He's quite, taking quite a bit of damage already. And what shall he do? Force retreat. And it only works on one team. Yet it still costs quite a bit. And there's nothing else he can really do. So he goes down. Which is rather tragic. Because the officer is actually a rather cool unit. He sounds pretty fun. But sadly he doesn't really live up to it. He just doesn't do much at all. MG42 team in the east occupied. But the Americans are approaching, it's a pensa maneuver on all sides and looks like another wave is ready but they need to move into support. Oh dear, it's already falling apart because VA can't keep his forces moving, this is most unfortunate. Otherwise he might have had a chance of knocking out this area and what is this? Stu 42, Veterans 2, moving in. Through the north. Looks like it has some plans here. Not entirely sure what though. And looks like something was blown up. Oh dear, that was the Puma. That was sad. Krieg das Vaterland leading a very heroic charge. On the Americans positions here. Strafing run moving in, keeping Yeasel's troops down and dead in some cases. But Krieg das Vaterland, oh they also get strafed, pinning and suppressing. But they were apparently split enough enough to do, do that much damage. Stu 42 advancing in these, clearing out the MG 42 anti tank gun, getting dropped, moving in. But will it be enough? No, the crew are awfully wounded, and a shot clears it all out. Goodness gracious. T 17 doing its best while the German forces are pushing through, and rather this good use of anti tanks has rather made it difficult for the Americans to move through here, actually. And the T-17 goes out of control, leaving the entire eastern flank exposed while the western one has been cracked open by Krieg das Vaterland as well. Thus making things a lot more perilous for the American 82nd Airborne. Although Airborne looks like to be dropping in right through here. T-17 blown to bits, Americans pushing through here still. No upgrades for the supply, ah, that's a bit daft. It looks like a major assault going out here, although in the open a bit, one has to be careful with that. Stormtroopers, Grenadiers running away, false Grenadiers as well. Pioneers are in the open, looks like this 242 might be forced to deal with some airborne moving in with the recoilless rifles. 
and they do manage to get behind it, opening up, doing a bit of damage, but some are lost to the might of the Sturmhaubitze. Mortar moving in, finally. Look like this 2 is actually continuing to take damage from the recordless rifles and able to deal with those pesky few airborne. They managed to knock out this 242 and gain veterans 2 in the process. But another Stu 42 arrives. Easily though suffering heavily as the Americans rather stubbornly advances with the help of a sniper. Clearing out the MD42 in there, but there's another MD42. Crewed by SS NCOs, ready to do their best. Looking very nice right there with the grass and all. We're not here to admire the scenery combined with German troops. And the American advance has been stalled and broken here in the east. Flak 88 actually ready this time around, blowing American troops a bit, it looks like. Snipers running away. Minute men pushing onwards with what remains of his forces. Stu 42 blasting through the terrain, making a way through whatever it can. Although the tank traps are posing to be a bit of a problem. And it looks like Krieg des Vaterlands infantry is getting ready once more. Quite a few kills with the full grenadiers, and this machine gun emplacement might be cleared out, thus clearing out the entire western approach for the Germans, making it a lot harder now for the Americans to actually focus the German forces, find them up, and kill them quite nicely. Anti-tank on recruit, flag 88 opening up, Stu 42 flanking in, oh dear, Ralfman retreating, but an anti-tank gun movement called in from the above and in the north. This 242 might not survive. Yes, indeed, blown to bits, another Stu 42, that's three Stu 42 for Krieg das Vaterland, that's not a good rate of loss, I fear. Pack 38, creating a strong point right there alongside the flag, Reitman doing their best, but they're taking too many heavy losses up in the open against the Grenadiers. Looks like VA is getting a bit too reckless due to desperation. Here, machine gun and mortar exposed, German forces of Krieg des Vaterland pushing through. No assault rifles though for stormtroopers, a bit unfortunate. Anti-tank gun holding out. American counter-attack going on. No BAR still for minute, men's riflemen. And still no upgrades for the supply yard. At all. I rather feel that might actually be one of the major problems why things are going so badly now for the Americans. And pinned down heavy losses for the first grand as American troops are advancing, causing all the click that starts lines infantry. To push back the Kampfgruppe von Tetzau has managed to secure area. And it's broke through, not broke through. Do try to speak proper English. <laughs> and Grenadiers out in the open, taking quite a bit of fire. BARs blazing, recallless rifles flying. Well, the rounds are flying, not the actual recallless rifle. Flag 88 opening up, airborne are advancing. Could it be they might be dropping some satchel charges on this medic bunker to clear it out? Oh no, apparently not. They're just standing about in the open again. They really seem to have an unfortunate sense of just standing about in the open due to desperation, which is not really helping with the casualty rates. And looks like the Americans while pushing through here are getting heavily bombarded by Nebwerfers. Taking quite some losses and taking quite a run away. The Kampfgruppe von Tetau advancing heroically. While in the west, other parts of it are advancing also a bit more stoically, with a bit more of a combination of forces. And we are in fact seeing six rifleman teams, although again, with that supply yard I wager, he has a rather high low income indeed. And that's one of the reasons why you upgrade the supply yard so you can actually get a decent manpower upkeep otherwise you'll simply be losing too much too quickly in the end that is an important lesson and it sadly looks like no, VA did not learn it nor did his friend Minuteman or Minutemen sniper opening up rifleman all everything advancing quite a bit of firepower though from all these riflemen with the BARs stormtroopers getting suppressed bundle grenades going off at the rifleman Almost knocking out the entire team and a huge retreat, lots of death, lots of fire as it turns into a chaotic mass panic. Rifleman no advancing, one last dashing attempt across the broken ground through the wreckage. Charging head on at the German forces for the fatherland calls upon the German troops to remember their duty, their oath to repel the American troops. And grenades going right into the front of Rifleman, doing quite a bit of damage by the 
right, Grenadiers managed to just barely turn this assault back, my goodness. And what is this? A tiger has arrived. Kampfgruppe von Teto has the might of the tigers. And what is this? Something flying above ground. I'm not sure, not sure what it was there for. But now the tiger has arrived. Looks like the Kampfgruppe von Teto is safe for now. Airborne charging in some with Veteran G2, which does to give them quite the accuracy increase. Snipe out in the open though. But the airborne ignore him. But they will not be able to ignore the tiger. Pride of the Fatherland, it moves in, opens up on the airborne. I said opens up, there we go. Mortar rounds landing on the German positions. And the airborne are getting absolutely slaughtered, blown to bits. Looks like the Flag 88 is just scoring kill after kill. Everywhere for firing away as well. Farting here, and looks like VA is throwing in what he can muster. And looks like Minutemen is now retreating, realizing the course is lost. He surrenders, and looks like VA has done as well. This force that landed quite a bit away from the rest has been beaten by the Kampfgruppe von Tetau. An exciting fight, I'd say. And what can we learn from this? Well, we saw some rather interesting move uses of American emplacements. You rarely see those, but they can still be used nicely if you know how to use them. We saw some interesting moving, actually just bogging off the Americans. Good use of barbed wire, really good use of mines, good uses of teamwork, of really concentrating your force and breaking through the defense. Although at the same time, one of the major problems of the Americans was no supply yet upgrades. They were probably throttled by the upkeep, that was rather the main problem. Good use of medic stations, although more could, have pr could probably have been done with. But again, supply yard upgrades, mightily in particular if you're going with that many riflemen, you will need it. Incredibly important. But good synergy of doctrines, good uses of Nebelwerfers, false grenadiers, MG42s and the lot. And it was nice to see the Puma actually being used as a Puma. You should rarely see that, but otherwise, interesting game, fun game, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, why not subscribe or tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying, remember those supply yard upgrades. Cheers.